So the next axiom on our list is the replacement schema. Replacement schema. And like the schema, uh, the, ac uh, the comprehension schema, it's not one axiom, it's actually infinitely many axioms. Um, and intuitively what this is gonna tell us is that if something is uh, a function uh, uh, and the domain of this function is a set, then uh, its range is also a set as well. So that's kind of intuitively what this is gonna be telling us. But formally what it says is, so it's a schema, so it's going to be infinitely many axioms. And what is it going to be? Well, for each property, for each property, uh, txy of two variables, what's going to be an axiom that's added to our uh, list of ZFC axioms? It's going to be the following statement. So it's going to be uh, for every single set A, um, if if for each x and A, uh, there is some y so that pxy holds. So if for every single x and A, we can find some y so that pxy holds, um, what we get is that there is some B so that for all x and A, well, the hypothesis tells us what? The hypothesis tells us that for each x and a, we know that there's some y so that pxy holds. What replacement is gonna tell us is that there's some set b so that for each x and a, there's a y in b. There's a y in b. So that pxy holds. So for every single property of two variables, this statement is going to be an axiom of ZFC. And um, so one way of, of uh, kind of thinking about this is we could draw a picture. Let's say that we have a set A right here. Here's our set A. And maybe it has some elements. It has maybe X1 here, that's one element. And maybe this element is maybe x2, maybe x3 is down here. And let's say that our um, um, uh, let's say that our property pxy, what it does is, well, maybe it associates x1 with a set over here. Call it maybe y1. Maybe it associates this x2. Um, uh, with with some set y2 and maybe it associates the set x3 to another set y3 over here. So this is what our kind of pxy is doing. Um, what the replacement schema tells us is that there's some set um, there's some set b that's going to kind of contain all of these elements. And so it might contain more it might contain more elements maybe over here, but what has to happen is for every single X and A, there has to be some association that X had. Uh, uh, so for each X and A, there had to be some association that was in the set B. So in this case, well, Y1 is in B, and that's the thing associated with X1. Uh, y, uh, Y2 is associated with X2, and uh, Y3 is associated with X3, and all of these things are in B. Um, so I guess intuitively one way of writing this is uh, so if um, a property looks like a function looks like a function uh, it maps sets to sets. Or in other words, kind of the pointwise image of a function, uh, if the domain is a set, is also going to be a set as well. Another useful way in which this is used is for uh, index management, so-called index management. Uh, management. 
And what exactly do I do I mean by that? I can give an example. Um, so I'm gonna maybe erase some stuff though. So okay. So let's say that here's our example. Um, what happens a lot of the time is, well, we're going to have some index set. So, so let's say that we have some index set. Let's call it I. And, um, and we're going to have an index set I, and we're going to have some association, um, Association. Um, uh, well, it's going to be it's going to be an association where for every single i in our index set, so for every little i in i, um, maybe how I want to write it like this: we have some association um, a sub little i for each little i in big i. Well. If we have an index set and we have a collection of uh, of sets AI, maybe what we want to do is take all the uh, take the union. So maybe maybe we want to look at this. Uh, so maybe we want to look at uh, we want to look at this set. We want to take the index union of all of these sets AI. Well, why can we do this? Why is this index union? Why is this a set? Well, we what does the axiom of union tell us? So we did talk about the axiom of union, but that doesn't necessarily imply uh, from our previous ZFC axioms that we talked about, that doesn't apply necessarily, or it's not immediate that's just, that this thing exists. Uh, because what we only know how to take unions of are collections of sets. So we only know how to compute this. Uh, so right now, whoops, that's not how wrong now. Um, right now, uh, we can only compute uh, something like this. That's what the axiom of union told us. We could take the union of a collection of sets. Well, why can we now talk about index unions? Well, if the association of the uh, of of i with ai is definable. So if the association um, is definable, and defi by definable I just mean that there's some property p x y uh, to kind of say exactly what this ai is. Um, well. Since I is a set, and since I is a set, um, so too is this. So too is uh, this set. Why is this a set? Well, by the replacement schema, there's some set B um, that includes all of the AIs, and then we might have to use the axiom of uh, the, the comprehension axiom to say that we only want to consider exactly the sets in B that are one of these AIs. But so, so too is this set here by replacement, by replacement and comprehension. Comprehension. But now, uh, this is a set of elements. And so by the, or this is a set that has a bunch of elements. We can take, by the axiom of union, uh, by the union axiom, we can take the union of this set. Um, so by union, um, so uh, do is this union. But what is this gonna be equal to? This is exactly the indexed union that we were interested in considering in the first place. 